Hello everybody, my name's Liz, I'm the Baker That Sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. So today's video, I'm going to be sharing all of the things that I got sewn up in the month of November. So I've got a couple of things mended and then I've got a few things um, sewn up for myself to wear. Didn't get any sewing done for anybody in my family despite the fact um, I planned for those. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that towards the end of the video. Um, before I dive into what I got sewn up, I thought I'd share what I'm wearing. And I am wearing um, a Nina Lee Southbank sweater in this amazing rainbow fabric. Um, and then I've got my olive pinafore on, which is from um, a Tilly and the Buttons. Um, it's from the Make It Simple book. It's got the pockets, it's got the snaps down the front, and it's quite a straightforward um, pinafore. And I'll put pictures in of me wearing this so you can see what it actually looks like. But it's from this book. Make it simple book. And it's called the Olive Pinafore. So it's this quite straightforward, um, loosely fitted pinafore dress. And then I've got snaps all the way down the front. This version doesn't have pockets, but there is an option to add pockets, which is what I've done to this version because, you know, pockets are great. Um, I don't tend to put anything in the pockets, if I'm honest, because they're quite small pockets, but there we go. And actually in the book, you can put flaps on the pockets, but I chose not to do that. Um, so I'll just stand up again so you can see what the pockets look like. Um, and then I lined the pockets with this really cool, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, roller skates lining. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. I might put a close-up picture in um, so you can see what the lining looks like, but it's nice and fun. And then, yeah, I've just paired it with a South Bank sweater because it's a little bit chilly in London today. So it's nice and cosy. We're going to go on a little walk a bit later. So on to what I got sewn up in the month of November. So I managed to get a couple of things sewn up for me and I got a couple of things mended. So I'll start with the mended things. So I shared in one of my previous videos, um, I had a bit of a mishap when I was wearing my boiler suit. So this is the um, Our Lady of Leisure Gimlet boiler suit and I'll put a picture in of what it looks like the, from their website, but I'll also put a picture in of me wearing this. And I'd made a version in this gorgeous soft needle cord that I got from a D-stash. And I just love all of the colours in that. And then I'd put some beautiful blue buttons on it. But I had a mishap when I wore this to work. Wore it to school, was leaning over to read a story to a child and I had the bottom area of my jumpsuit rip. Luckily I had a jumper so I could tie it around my waist for the rest of the day because that happened at lunchtime I think. Um, so I needed to repair the bottom area. Now I asked for lots of tips and suggestions on how to do that. So I got lots and lots of suggestions of different ways to repair my boiler suit. So thank you so much to everybody that took the time to suggest various things. Um, I'm a massive fan of visible mending, but because it was the bottom area of my um, boiler suit, I didn't think it would be a good idea to have visible mending right on my bottom area. I didn't really want to draw any more attention to the fact that that was where I'd had to repair it. Um, and also I didn't want people being drawn to looking at that area. So um, what I ended up doing was using my machine because it's got a programmable darning stitch um, on there. So I just used that on the inside, um, just using a red thread because of the majority of the color of this um, jumpsuit, there's lots and lots of red. So I thought if I used red, then it wouldn't be visible on the outside. So I'm just trying to find where I ended up mending it. And you can't actually tell now where, where the rip was, which I'm really pleased about because that was exactly what I was going for. So if I hold it up, the rip was along here. Um, and because I've done the darning and the mending on the inside, you can't actually tell. There's no visible stitching on the outside. So I'm really pleased I've managed to reinforce that area um, and I will be able to continue wearing my boiler suit because it's one of my favourite boiler suits. The other thing that I needed to do this month was fix the mistake that I made with my Semi Something Cotagon. So it's the Bianca Cotagon. So I shared this in my October makes. I absolutely love this gorgeous, cosy boucle Cotagon. Um, but the collar detail here, there was um, where I'd attached it, you could see the um, seam and it looked just a little bit bulky. So you could see this was on the outside so that when you wear the coat, I could see it along here. Um, and lots and lots of people suggested various different things and quite a few people suggested that I'd actually made a mistake and um, I'd stitched it up the wrong way around. So I went back to the instructions 
um, and I had a little look and I had indeed made a huge mistake and I'd stitched them um, the wrong way around. So what you're actually supposed to do is stitch the collar part wrong, um, yeah, wrong sides together so that when you wear it, this seam line is not visible because it's tucked under like that, just like that. So I went back and I fixed it and I'm much happier. If I pop it on, I'm much happier with the seam line at the back because you can't see it. Oh, it just looks a lot neater. So I went and fixed that. So thank you so much again to everybody that showed me um, where I'd gone wrong with that. Um, and I absolutely love wearing this coat again. I've worn it out so much. Um, I have to make sure I check the weather before I go out because of the rain. I don't want to get wet because it's not waterproof. But it's so snuggly and warm. It's exactly what I wanted from a coat again. So thank you again to everybody that offered me advice on how to repair that or how to fix the mistake that I'd made. So on to what I've made for myself this month. I've got my list as usual uh, and I made five, six dresses. Um, I do have a lot of dresses in my wardrobe and I do absolutely love wearing dresses. Um, I shared a post over on Instagram for one of my dresses that I've made. Um, oh, actually I've not written it down. So I've made more dresses. I need to go and grab that dress actually. Um, I, yeah, I shared an Instagram post just saying how much I love wearing dresses and how it just makes me feel really good about myself. You know, that's a garment that I feel really comfortable in, um, you know, whether it's for looking after the kids at the weekend or going to school or going out. I just love how I feel wearing a dress, um, which is why I think I've got so many dresses in my wardrobe. So it'd be interesting to know what garment makes you feel really good about yourself and what you've maybe sewn most of. Um, I am looking over the next couple of months to sew some more trousers, but I've been really drawn to wearing collots and sewing collots that almost feel like I've got a swishy dress on um, and I've made a pair of collots, which I'm gonna share in a minute. Anyway, I'm waffling on. So onto the first two things that I've got sewn up and they're both the same pattern and it is a new pattern by Tilly and the Buttons and it's the Billy dress. Now, when this first came out, I thought, hmm, it's quite similar to quite a lot of other patterns that I've got in my stash. Um, but the thing that drew me to this pattern was the sleeves, because you've got this option to do these amazing balloon sleeves. Um, and yeah, so you can see the balloon sleeve better on the model there, because the line drawings don't show how amazing the balloon sleeves are. So I ordered some fabric, and the fabric I ordered was from Like So Amazing, and it's this gorgeous sweatshirting fabric, which is in this like bright pink colorway. And then it's got the light pink polka dots, which are quite large scale. Um, and I ended up making two versions of the Billy dress, exactly the same versions. So it's a pattern for confident beginners. You sew it up in a stretch fabric. So fabric suggestions, sweatshirt fleece, French cherry, ponty, double knit, interlock, or sweater knit. And it has to have at least 10% stretch. Now, this fabric hasn't got a huge amount of stretch. Um, let me show you on a bit of it. If I hold it upside down, then I'll be able to show it. Hasn't got a huge amount of stretch. Really not much at all. But because the pattern is quite oversized, um, it was fine for it not to have a huge amount of stretch. The only thing that I had to do differently was use a ribbing for the neckline and for the cuffs and for the hem. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to get it over my head. So that was the only thing that I had to do differently. So I would just suggest that if you have got a fabric in mind to make the billy, but it's not got a huge amount of stretch, it would be okay as long as you use something different for the neckline, the cuffs and the hemband. Um, it comes in sizes, well, Tilly sizes are one to 10, which is a UK six to a UK 24, um, which is a size one or a UK six is a 30 inch bust. 24 inch waist and a 33 inch hip and then a UK 24 or a Tilly size 10 is a bust measurement of 48 inches, a waist measurement of 42 inches and a hip measurement of 51 inches. Now I ended up going for a UK 10 um, which is the 34 inch bust because that's what my bust measurement is. Uh, waist is 28 inches and then hip is 37 inches. I probably could have sized down and the next one, actually the next one that I did make, I did size down. Um, but I wanted to try it in the size 10 first because I was going off my bust measurement because I didn't want it to be too tight across there. And sometimes when I've gone off my hip and my waist measurement when I'm making a dress or a top, it's ended up being too tight across here. 
So um, I did size down for the second version and I'll show you that in a second. So it's quite a straightforward sweater dress. You can also use the pattern to make a jumper. You can make plain sleeves or you can do the balloon type sleeves. Um, and then you can also add pockets. So the model is wearing a dress version with pockets um, and the pockets are sort of in here on the, around the hip area. Both of the versions that I made, I chose not to include pockets. Um, I just wanted to have a go at sewing it up straight away. Um, and also I didn't want to add any extra bulk around that area. And this fabric was quite chunky and the other fabric that I used is quite chunky too. So I chose not to insert pockets, but I've seen some beautiful versions where there are pockets. Um, this has been brilliant for wearing to work, but it's also been great for throwing on whilst I've been at home looking after my girls um, and just, you know, general day to day stuff like cleaning the house or going shopping or I mean, we're not doing a huge amount at the moment, but it's really comfortable to wear. I absolutely love the dramatic balloon sleeve that you get and I think it gives it a really modern feel and just a really lovely look. Um, so I have made it in two versions. I've made it in this version, which is a sweatshirt fabric um, and it's got a fleece inside, so it's super snuggly and warm. Um, and this was from Like So Amazing and I know that Sarah's got a different colourway of this. I think she's got a mustard version. So I also used ribbing that I got from First for Fabrics. So I used a light pink ribbing for the neckline and the cuffs. And then I used a darker pink ribbing for the hem band because I didn't want to draw attention to that hem band too much. And I thought if I used the lighter ribbing, it would draw quite a lot of attention to that bottom piece. Um, so I'm really pleased with how that has turned out. Like I said, I absolutely love this balloon sleeve. Um, and then it also gathers in here. So you get quite a dramatic sleeve it's amazing I absolutely love it so I'll insert pictures of me wearing that one and then so I absolutely love my first version and then I went on to make a second version because if you followed me for a while you'll know that if I find a pattern that I absolutely love I end up making it again and again and again I've only made two of these but I have got two jumper versions that I've got in mind um, and I ended up using a Ponty Roma that I got from um, Rainbow Fabrics and it's got a light pink background and then it's got these like red bows on and I absolutely love red and pink at the moment. This has got a lot of stretch, so I could use it for the neckline, um, as well as the cuffs and as well as the hem. So I did exactly the same version. I did these gorgeous balloon sleeves. I mean, look at that cuff detail. It's just fantastic. Uh, it's got the neckline, it's got quite deep cuffs, and then I've just got the hem band at the bottom. Um, and this version I've worn to work quite a few times and every time I wear it, um, I get lots and lots of compliments, which is lovely. I'm still not brilliant at saying thanks, I made it. I just go, oh, thanks, and walk off. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love this version too. And I'll insert pictures of me wearing both of those versions so you can see what they look like. Really, really straightforward pattern. I've probably sewn it up in an hour. Um, I used my overlocker to sew most of it and then I just finished off the neckline um, with a top stitch along the neckline using my machine. Um, I've already said about fabrics, it does take up quite a lot of fabric. So if you're going to make the version that's got the balloon sleeves, this one, you need, I think just over two meters, 2.3 meters. Did I manage to get it out of two meters? I think I did. It depends on how wide your fabric is. I think the fabric I used was 1.5 meters, so I did manage to get it out of two meters. Um, and that was the sizes one to five, which is a UK six to a UK 14. If you're making a UK 16 to UK 24, then you need about two and a half to 2.8 meters of fabric. Um, so overall, a really straightforward pattern. I can see lots more of these in my wardrobe and I'm definitely going to give the sweatshirt version with the amazing balloon sleeves a try. Um, so yeah, another fantastic pattern from Tilly. I just absolutely love her patterns. I just think they're so well thought out and they're really straightforward to follow um, and they really hold your hand. So I would definitely recommend buying the Billy um, pattern. So that was the first two. So the next two things that I made this month are again, a Tilly and the Buttons pattern. And it's one of my favorite patterns. Um, I use the Indigo dress and I use the, the add-on pack. So this is the original. Um, yeah, so you can make like a smock type dress and these are the line drawings. So you can make the top or you can do the dress. 
And you can also do this beautiful exposed ruffle seam along here and along the sleeves as well. And you could do the fluted sleeves. I chose to do the short sleeves, um, which I've got the line drawings for here. But I use the add-on pack for the Talina Buttons Indigo, which means that you can make it a midi length. And then there's also a tier that you can add on the bottom. So I'll just show you the line drawings. So I did this version here. And I didn't add the ruffle on the sleeve. I just chose to do the short sleeve, which is this version here um i did this skirt with the ruffle on the bottom and i also did the button down back so i did that for both of my versions the first version of the tilly and the buttons indigo that i got sewn up this month um was part of the hashtag swap share sew and so it's a challenge that was started by rosie says modern vintage and loopy mabel's closet and i think it was set up a few years ago and it's a challenge that happens each year you basically you get buddied up with another sewist and you um, share what your project might be um, a few little things about you like what your likes are what your favorite snack is what your favorite color is and um, the fabric that you're planning to use and then you send each other a bundle of various dressmaking things so it might be buttons ribbons it might be some fat quarters um, I think this year you could send pockets if you're going to insert pockets into your make. Um, I got buddied up with the lovely Lynn and we didn't send each other pockets, but we did send each other some amazing goodies. Um, we did send each other some amazing goodies and I got some amazing um, buttons and some bias binding. Uh, I got um, a bullet journal. I got some sweeties. It was so lovely and really exciting receiving something. So I used the buttons that I got in my pack to do the button down back on this dress version. And I sent Lynn a picture of the fabric that I was going to use. Now it's a fabric I've had in my stash for a while from Semi Sunshine. And I think I always thought it was gonna be turned into the indigo, but I just never got around to doing it. So this was the push that I needed. Cause I think it's quite, without being all out Christmas, I think it is quite festive fabric. So it's this, it's so unbelievably soft. I can't remember what type of fabric it is. Um, it feels like a cotton lawn, but it's really drapey. I think it might be a rayon. It's so lovely and soft. But anyway, this was the fabric that I used. So it's a green background, white flowers, and then it's got red splodges all in the flowers. It's so beautiful. So I used it to make the midi version of the indigo. I'm just going to hold it up so you can see. Look at that gorgeous skirt. So that's the bodice. I've got the short sleeves, and then I've got the ruffle on the bottom there. And then on the back, I'm just going to show you what the back looks like uh, with the buttons going all the way down the back. And then I've got these gorgeous green buttons that Lynn sent me, which go perfectly with the fabric. And um, Lynn set pictures of me wearing the indigo dress, but it is a dress that I just absolutely love. Um, it feels very much my style. I love a midi dress on me. Um, I love being able to swish around in a dress. Um, and I love the button down back detail of the indigo as well because it just makes it feel a little bit more um, special. Now, because this fabric is quite delicate, I did French seam everything, so it did take slightly longer. Um, I had a bit of a nightmare, if I'm being perfectly honest, with the buttonholes. Four attempts to sew in the buttonholes and eventually I got there. So I ended up unpicking them quite a few times, which on a delicate fabric which was a bit nerve wracking. Um, ended up re-threading my machine so many times but I got there in the end and I'm so delighted with this version that I went on to make another version and I knew that I was going to turn this fabric into an indigo. I, you know, as soon as I saw this fabric I knew that it needed to be an indigo dress um, and the reason I knew it needed to be an indigo dress is because because the skirt's quite long because it's midi length and then you've got the ruffle the bodice also you've got this front piece I know you've got the back bodice with the button down but it wouldn't have distorted the fabric too much um, and this fabric definitely just needed the opportunity to shine and it is this amazing cotton lawn fabric that I got from Sony Sunshine with all the animals on so it's got like the tigers it's got zebras it's got giraffes it's got parrots it's just an amazing amazing fabric I absolutely love it and then for the button down back, I used buttons that I got from Ethel and Joan, which I absolutely love. So they're clear buttons, but then they've got this little pop of orange, which I thought brought out the orange in the fabric. Um, I was very careful with the placement on the front because I didn't want, um, basically, I didn't want an animal positioned over my bust. And I also didn't want an animal positioned 
in this area. So I was quite careful with where I positioned the various animals, but I really love that I've got that tiger on the front. And my class used to be called tiger class. They're not called tiger class anymore, but our class teddy that goes home is a tiger. So when I wore this to work, the children just absolutely loved it. And they loved just spotting all the different animals that we've got on there too. So it's such a fun fabric and I'm so pleased that I managed to get this turned into a beautiful dress that I know I'm going to wear so much. Just absolutely love it. So the indigo dress, um, it's a tried and tested pattern. Um, I absolutely love it. It's a pattern that just feels very much like me. Um, it comes in the um, Tilly sizes 1 to 10, which is a UK 6 to a UK 24. I always make a UK 10, which is a Tilly size 3, um, and that's because I go off my bust measurement because it is quite fitted across the bust. Um, if you were umming and ahhing, if you had this version and you were umming and ahhing about whether to um, get the add-on pack, I would say the only reason I got the add-on pack was because I knew that I wanted to do the button-down detail on the back, and I probably could have drafted it myself to do that, but I just didn't want to get the measurements wrong. So I, I got the um, add-on pack purely for the button-down detail. If you were just going to do the add-on pack to make it midi and use the tier at the bottom, I would say you don't need the add-on pack um, because before Tilly released this, I actually did um, hack the pattern to turn it into a midi with a ruffle on the bottom. I'll put pictures in of what that dress looks like. Um, so you can definitely hack it yourself without buying the add-on pack. The only reason I did get the add-on pack, like I said, was to get the um, button-down detail here, which I absolutely love because you get the facing pattern piece as well and you get the new pattern piece for the back because you have to cut two separate pieces. Um, it is a pattern for confident beginners. If you make it in something like a cotton lawn or a cotton poplin, it's so much easier because that fabric's quite easy to handle. If you make it in something like a viscose or a rayon, because that fabric's so drapey and quite slippy, it does make it slightly trickier um, to make it. Um, but quite straightforward, um, if you just make this version, there's no fastenings at all, so it is a really straightforward dress. And if you did the um, version where you don't have the exposed frill seam, so just this version, um, it's really straightforward So, So you can do the bracelet length sleeve. My preference is a short sleeve, and then I'll just layer it with a long sleeve top underneath, because I like to be able to push my sleeves up. Um, quite often I'll have my sleeves like this, I hardly ever have my sleeves down here unless I'm outside in the garden with the children and it's absolutely freezing, by which point I've got a million layers on to try and keep cosy. So I made two versions of the indigo. One's a definitely more festive and the other one I think I'll be able to wear all year round. So really pleased with those. Um, then I made um, probably a favourite pattern of mine. In fact, I think it is a favourite pattern of mine. I made some of the Jennifer Lauren handmade bastion clots in this version that stops just at your knee. I absolutely love this pattern. It's so voluminous. Um, the clots are just really drapey, um, especially in the fabric that I chose to use. And I just absolutely love wearing them. I think because they're really swishy, I feel like I've got a dress on. Um, instructions, just brilliant. The Jennifer Lauren Bastion Collots come in sizes 6 to 24. Um, so a size 6, waist measurements 24 inches and a hip measurements 35 inches. Um, and then tw size 24 is 42 inch waist and 53 inch hips. Um, so I made a size 8. Now, um, my hip measurement normally is a 28 inch, but at the moment I'm a 26 inch waist and a 35 inch hip. Um, and looking at the finished garment measurements, um, it's a 27 inch waist and the hip, there's a lot of movement around there anyway, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, when I have made the, this version up, I actually ended up taking a little bit more out of the side seams because it came up quite big on my waist up here because it sits quite high. Um, if I show you the line drawing, they're meant to sit really high up. So actually, if I made them again, I think I'd probably make a size six. Um, I think I'd twirl a size six and just check that they fit okay. Because um, when you wear them, they come up to about here, which is quite high on your waist. I absolutely love the instructions. They're really straightforward to follow. And um, these are the line drawings. This is the shorter version and this is the longer version. So I made version 
2, this one. Do they call it view 2? No, view 1. <laughs> it looks like view 2 because it's the second person. So the version that I have made is the longer version. So it's almost like, I guess, midi. It goes beyond your knee. And I love them because they're so swishy and amazing. Now, let me see what the fabric requirements are for view one so you need if your fabric's 150 centimeters and it says that you need 2.5 meters of fabric um if your fabric is 115 centimeters wide then you need 3.25 meters of fabric i have managed to get it out of 2.5 meters uh, with a little bit to spare um like i said i made a size eight but i think i would size down to a size six next time and i love the pocket detail because that's where your collots fasten so you end up putting four buttonholes and um, obviously four buttons on either side of the pocket and that's how they fasten. So let me show you my version. I'll put pictures in of me wearing them. But I absolutely love them. I used buttons from my Swap, Share, Sew parcel from Lynn. I used the green buttons because the fabric that I used has got tiny little pops of green and I really wanted to um, show off the pops of green. And I just love how bright those buttons are against that background. So it's a fabric that I got from Rainbow Fabrics. It's a viscose twill. It's got loads of drape and movement, which I absolutely love. If I just move the um, instructions away, I'm going to stand up so that you can see. So they normally sit about here um, and they're just lovely and swishy. And then you've got the pockets here. And then to get them on and off, you have to undo the buttons here. And the buttons are along the pocket detail. So this is actually the pocket piece. Um, and then when you fasten that up, that becomes part of the pocket, which I think is a really clever feature. And then it does the same on the other side. Um, and then that's your front waistband. And then you've got your two buttonholes just here. And then you've got the back waistband, which actually starts as the pocket. So your back waistband is really wide. And then you've got the buttons on there. It's really clever construction. I absolutely love them. I've made so many versions of the Bastion Colots now. They come together quite quickly as well. They're quite a straightforward sew. Um, again, because this fabric is quite delicate, so it did fray quite a lot, I French seamed it. So that did take slightly longer, but it means that the inside of my collots is lovely and neat. Um, and I just love that pop of colour. I think they're just absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I'll definitely, definitely make more versions of the Bastion Clots. These, this version, I think because the fabric's quite dark, I think it's definitely an autumn winter version layered with, um, I think I just wore it with a frayer top and a cardigan and then thick woolly tights. And I also do wear thermals when I go to school because I spend so much time in the garden. Um, they're really wide legged. So every time I wear them, people say, oh, I love your skirt. And then I... I do this funny thing where I stick my leg up and go, actually, they're clots. Um, Yeah, because I just absolutely love them. The, um, because the leg is so wide, it does make it feel like you're wearing a skirt. And they're just super swishy. I just absolutely love them. Um, they do sit up quite high on your waist, like I said. So if you were thinking of making them, you just have to think about whether you, you, you like the feel of um, things being quite high up on your waist. I do. I love how these make me feel and I'm really really pleased that I managed to get those sewn up and I've worn them loads already to work. So another fantastic pattern um, and I find the instructions really easy to follow um, and I've seen so many beautiful versions of this. Um, fabric recommendations, um, what does it say? Um, so the Bastion Colots are suitable for a wide range of light to mid-weight woven fabrics with some drape. So if you're going to do summer version, says um, cotton lawn, voile and poplin to linen and chambray. And then winter versions, mid-weight denims, pinwell, baby cords, flannel, wool and wool blends. I really want to make a wool version of the Bastion Colots. And actually there's a fabric that I'm going to show you in a second of something that I made this month that I was con contemplating turning into clots, but actually um, I'm glad I didn't use that fabric because it had a bit of stretch. And I have ordered some wool fabric, which I'm hoping will arrive this week to make some clots using that wool fabric. So absolutely love that pattern. I can definitely see plenty more in my wardrobe. Okay, on to the next thing that I got made up. Um, and it's using the fabric that I did contemplate using to make some clots, but I ended up turning it into a coatigan. 
and that was thanks to everybody's comments on my um i think it was a fabric haul video uh lots and lots of people were saying don't use it to make clots don't use it to make trousers it's destined to become a cootigan and that is exactly what i turned it into and it's this gorgeous fabric that i got from fabric godmother so i ended up using this fabric which I got from Fabric Godmother and it's a knit coating fabric um, and I'll link them down below if they've got any left. I love the pop of colour and it's like a tartan print. I just think it's fabulous. I'll pop it on in a second so you can see what it looks like. Um, and I used the Jessie coat again from Sew Over It which I've had, um, I think I bought this when it first came out and I didn't get around to sewing it up. Um, so it's quite a straightforward coat again. If I show you the line drawings that's what it looks like. It's got this cuff detail, it's got this lovely, co lovely collar detail that comes down um, and it stops at your, I think it stops at your knee, uh, just above your knee actually. So it's quite a short coatigan, which I quite like because the Sew Me Something coatigan, this one, the Bianca coatigan, is quite a long coatigan. I might put them both on in a second so you can see the comparison of what this one looks like and this one looks like. Um, the Jessie Coatigan comes in sizes 8 to 20 and if I just find the sizing information for you, I think I made a size 8 based on my measurements um, because I also knew that this would be quite oversized. Okay, so sizes. Um, bust measurement for an 8 is 33, waist 26 and hip 36 um, and then for a size 20 it's 45 inch bust, 38 inch waist and 48 inch hip. And then it gives you the finished garments. There's a huge amount of ease in it, which is why I went for a size eight. So for a size eight, the finished garment measurements for the bust is 44 inches, waist 45 and a half inches and hip 48 inches. It also gives you the back length and the underarm seam length in the finished garment measurements, which I think is a really useful measurement to have when you're making something like a coat again, because then you can see where it's going to finish and what it's going to feel like under your arms as well. Fabric recommendations, medium weight woven fabrics like a boiled wool, melton or twill crepe. And then it says, alternatively, you can use a medium weight knit fabric with some drape. Um, knit fabrics with wool content work well for this too. Um, this has got a lot of stretch. I don't think it matters. Um, it makes it really comfortable actually. So it has got quite a lot of stretch to it. Can you see that? Yeah, um, but it's absolutely fine. I'll pop it on so you can see what it looks like. I'm not sure if it'll go with what I'm wearing. It might do because of the rainbows, but um, here it is. Oh, the other thing to say, it's got pockets. It's got quite big pockets, which is amazing. And they're inseam pockets. Um, I took ages pattern matching. It doesn't look like I have, but I definitely did. So I spent ages pattern matching along the front. There's no fastenings down here at all, but um, I still knew that I wanted it. I didn't want it to be like that. It would annoy me. So I did spend a while pattern matching. Um, if I stand up, then you can see the length. So here are my knees and it finishes sort of about here. So actually wearing something like the pinafore, if I wore then the coat again, it would look like I'm not really wearing anything. And then you've got the cuff detail here, which is a lovely detail. You've got this lovely like collar detail too. And if I turn around, it goes around the back. And then you finish that on the inside. It's got a facing on the coat again, which I really like as a way of finishing it. And then you hand stitch this collar detail. If I just take it off again, you hand stitch the collar detail on the inside. So you get a really lovely, neat finish on the inside as well as the outside. Really neat finish. Nice uh, standard sleeve. And um, like I said, you've got the pockets, which are lovely. Um, and then, yeah, it's just a really nice, cosy, um, oversized coat again. It's nice and snuggly and warm. And I've worn it out again quite a few times. Um, really straightforward to sew up. Um, the only tricky aspect is the fabric that you choose to use, because this was quite bulky fabric to get through my overlocker and my sewing machine. So I did choose to overlock the seams because this fabric's quite fluffy fabric. Um, but depending on the fabric that you choose to use, you might not need to overlock it. Um, really, really lovely. So really quite straightforward. So really lovely, straightforward. So I think I'd definitely make another version of the coat again. And I'm not quite sure why it took me so long to actually get around to sewing it. I like the length. I really like the length of it. And I've seen some beautiful versions too. So another 
great addition to my wardrobe and this is going to keep me snuggly and warm when I'm at school. I need lots of chunky oversized um, cardigans and coatigans just to keep me nice and warm and this fabric was an absolute dream to sew with and I just absolutely love it too. I'll put the other coatigan on just so you can see the difference in length. So this one is the Bianca coatigan from Sew Me Something. Let me just pop it on so you can see the difference in the length because this one is quite a lot quite a lot longer quite a lot longer this one is longer in length and then you've got the patch pockets for this one i much prefer the inseam pockets um less chunky so this one um goes below my knee it's my knees here so it's a good sort of two inches below my knee but uh, this one i like because it feels like you're wrapping yourself in a blanket i mean that one feels like that too but this really feels like a blanket because when you wrap yourself in, you're like completely covered. Um, and actually I've worn this around the house as a bit of a dressing gown as well, just when I get in and it's a bit chilly when I've just got in from work. So both really great patterns, both really lovely. Um, but yeah, they do come up in different lengths. So that one's much longer. So that one is the Semi Something Bianca Cotigan. Both great patterns. So the next thing that I've got sewn up and the final thing that I'm going to share in this video um, is the LED wrap dress by Closet Core Patterns. So they used to be Closet Case Patterns and they changed a while ago and rebranded to Closet Core Patterns. You can make it in this length or you can make it in the, a longer version. And actually there's three lengths. There's the mini skirt, midi skirt and maxi skirts. So these are the line drawings. Um, it comes in sizes um, 0 to 20. So a size 0 is a 31 inch bust. 24 inch waist, 33 inch hip, and then the size 20 is a 46 inch bust, 39 inch waist, and a 48 inch hip. Um, I decided to go with view B, I think, yeah, view B, which is the midi skirt. Um, it's a lovely wrap dress, um, it's got grown on sleeves, um, which I absolutely love, and you can choose to do a shorter grown on sleeve or you can choose to do the longer grown on sleeve. I chose to do the longer grown on sleeve, which I absolutely love. Um, it's really comfortable. What I also like is it's a really high crossover for the wrap, because what I often find with wrap dresses is they gape um, or they're quite low. And I know with the So Over It um, Eve wrap dress, that does sometimes come quite low, so I do tend to wear a vest underneath. With this one, I didn't need to at all because the crossover is quite high up. So I really like that because I feel quite secure and I don't feel like I'm going to flash or anything like that. Really quite straightforward to sew. What's the difficulty? Difficulty is two out of five. Um, fabric recommendations, light to medium weight wovens like linen, cotton poplin, batisse, voile, chambray, or a drapey fabric like a silk, viscose tensile or rayon chalice for a more elegant or fluid effect. And I used this um, viscose that I got from Rainbow Fabrics and it's so bright and fun and really colourful. I just absolutely love it. Um, and I chose to do the longer sleeve version and I'll put pictures of me wearing it. This is such a happy, feel good dress. I absolutely loved wearing it to work. I popped it on and it just made me feel so good about myself. Um, yeah, so it does take up a lot of fabric um, what does it say about fabric requirements? So, fabric requirements. If you're going to do view A, you need um, 3.2 metres, unless you make a size 10 where you need 3.75 metres. If you're going to make view B, which is the midi version, so this is view A, which is the shorter version. If you're going to do the midi version, then it says you need almost 4 metres, so 3.9 metres of fabric. And if you're going to do the maxi version, then you need five metres of fabric. So I did view B, which is the midi version, and I did need, um, I think I used about three and a half metres of fabric. Um, yeah, so the fabric recommendations are pretty spot on. Um, you also need some interfacing and thread and a point turner because it's got ties, and I find a point turner much easier. Whoops. So yeah, it's got the tie, de uh, the tie detail as well. So you do want a point turner to get that nice and sharp. Um, it's a great wrap dress. I'm definitely going to make some more. Um, I think I'd quite like to try the shorter version. Um, and I'm definitely in the summer going to make a maxi version. So another really great pattern. 
I said that was the last one, but I've just remembered that I actually made another dress, which I'm just going to go and grab. So the final make that I've got to show you is another of my favourite dress patterns, and it's the Deer and Doe Maya Sotis dress. So here are the line drawings, um, and I made the... Um, so what I tend to do with the Maya Sotis is I use this skirt piece, which is a longer skirt piece, but then I like to add the ruffle on the bottom. So you end up with a midi length skirt, which finishes below your knee. Um, and then I love ruffles. So I did the sleeve version that's got the ruffles here. Um, now the Deer and Doe Maya Sotis has a mandarin collar, which you can see on this line drawing, but Stitch Odyssey, so Marie, who is Stitch Odyssey on Instagram, and I'll leave her details down below, has done an Instagram TV tutorial on how to omit the collar and draft your own facing for down the front. And the way that you do that is you trace your front and back pieces around the neckline to create your own facing so that you can omit the collar. Um, I'd highly recommend going to watch Marie's um, tutorial because she explains it brilliantly. And that is now my preferred method for finishing off the bodice and the neckline of the Maya Sotis. Um, it's a lovely pattern. It's quite an oversized pattern, so it's quite loose fitting. Um, so some people I know have added waist ties in just to cinch it in at the back. I quite like that loose feel. Um, I've mentioned before that quite often I suffer from bloating around my tummy area. So I quite like having that movement around my tummy. Um, so it comes in sizes 34 to 52. The size that I always make is a 38, which is a 34 and a half bust, 34 and a half inch bust, 26 and three quarter inch waist and a 37 inch um, hip. Um, and then it also gives you the finished garment measurements, which I really like. So for a size 38, finished garment measurements, 39 and three quarter inch bust, 32 and five eighths inch waist and 66 and a quarter, uh, 66 and an eighth of an inch hip. And then it also gives you the skirt length, which I also really like. So I always do the longer skirt length, I always add the ruffle and I always do the short sleeves with the ruffle too because ruffles are amazing and they make me feel really good. The pattern also has a pocket piece. So you've got pockets in the skirt side seams. Um, fabric recommendations, chambray, rayon twill, batiste, double gauze, lightweight cotton sateen. And then it also says to allow extra fabric to pattern match the stripes or the plants. Um, fabric requirements, if you're going to do version A, which is the this version with the ruffles and the ruffles on the sleeves, then it says that you need three and a quarter yards of fabric. And if you're going to do view B, then you need two and three quarter yards. The dress that I made, I used three metres of fabric. I used this gorgeous fabric that I got from Rainbow Fabrics, um, which is this black background with all these red flowers. And then it's got a little bit of green. I don't know if you can see like the green leaves. And then it's got some beige flowers too. Now this has literally just come out of the, um, well, it's not just come out of the wash, but it's just come off the dryer. So it is crumpled. Um, I'm going to wear it this week, but I haven't got around to doing any of my ironing at the moment. What I tend to do is on a Sunday, I'll get all my outfits ready for the week and then I'll iron them. So it is crumpled. I do iron my clothes. I just don't always iron them for my videos. Um, so here is a crumpled sleeve, but you can see it's short sleeve and then it's got this ruffle. Um, I don't have the collar on because I did a facing instead. And you can see that lovely detail down here. Um, I used buttons from Felicity Fabrics, which are these lovely red buttons. Um, so there's the skirt, and then it's got the ruffle at the bottom. Now this fabric is a viscose twill from Rainbow Fabrics, and it's quite delicate, so it did fray a lot. So I did finish the seams with French seams inside. So I did quite a lot of um, slow sewing this month, although I've made quite a few things. The finish on the inside, I took my time over because I sewed with quite a lot of delicate fabrics. So um, I did finish it all with French seams. So it's all lovely and neat, um, especially around the um, sleeves as well, because I just didn't want to run the risk of any of this fabric pulling um, or, you know, fraying on the inside. Um, I tend to finish quite a lot of my garments with my overlocker, but if I think it's a fabric that's quite delicate, that, you know, over time could end up fraying despite being overlocked, I will do French seams. So I French seamed um, the ruffles too, um, which was a really fun way of finishing the dress. It took a little bit longer, but this is a pattern that I'm so familiar with sewing up that actually it didn't really matter. 
um, it was quite straightforward. And it's really lovely to have a Garmin that is so beautifully finished on the inside. So that is the last thing that I got sewed up this month. So I did get a lot of things made. I've got a lot of things that make me smile and make me really happy. Um, as we know, um, the UK has been in another lockdown. So uh, my weekends in the evenings, I've tended to do lots of sewing. Um, and sewing really does make me feel really good about myself. And I really, really enjoy it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed um, watching what I sewed in the month of November. December, I think, is going to be slightly quieter, although then I've got the two-week um, Christmas break, so I'll probably get some sewing done in December, and I will film a December plans video too. Um, and I'm also going to be filming a fabric haul and a pattern haul, because I did treat myself to a few pieces of fabric and patterns when it was the Black Friday sales too. Uh, let me know what you've been up to. What was your favourite thing that I sewed this month? Um, oh, and the other thing to say is um, I did plan to do some T-shirts for myself and my husband and pyjamas, but my overlocker has stopped working at the moment um, and I was planning to use the overlocker to finish the seams for those various things. So at the moment it's going off to be fixed. I'm not quite sure what's wrong with it. When I press the pedal, I can hear the motor. It makes a noise like it wants to start, but nothing is happening. So I've tried re-threading it. I've tried... Um, sort of tightening any of the screws that might have come loose. I've given it a really good clean and hoover out. Um, yeah, so it's not working at the moment. So that's gonna go off and get mended. So I think I might do some slow sewing in December because I'm not sure how long that's gonna take to get fixed um, and finished my seams with more French seams. Um, thank you as always for watching. I hope whatever you're up to, you are well, you're keeping safe and you're having lots of fun. Um, thank you ever so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, it'd be amazing if you could consider subscribing. Um, and if you don't follow me over on Instagram, head over there because I do always share throughout the month different things that I've made. I'm the baker that sews over on Instagram too. Um, I'll be back soon with another video. I think my next video will be my fabric haul or my December plans. Take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.